Hello again, everybody. I'm Logan Crawford, and this is Fresh Outlook, another Apple unveiling a new iPad, iMac, and an iPad. Take a look. As slim as a pencil, Apple Inc. introduces iPad Air 2 with a fingerprint sensor. The quarter-inch tablet can take burst shots and slow-motion video. The Retina 5K display shows incredible technology leadership. Pre-orders start October 17th with a price tag of $499 and up. The iPad Mini 3 is $100 cheaper. The company also released an updated Mac operating system and a high-resolution iMac model. These products are basically incremental improvements to the prior ones. Despite the updates, tablet sales will rise only 11 percent this year, while smartphones outsell them. Customers that hold a 5-inch uh, phone don't necessarily need or, or want to pay for a 7-inch tablet. But consumers want the latest slice of the Apple Pie since it comes with Apple Pay. They will have a significant revenue opportunities simply from Apple Pay and, the, and our ability and convenience of making pay, uh, cashless payments. Chief Executive Tim Cook said developers were beginning to design apps for its upcoming watch. Oh, excuse me, I was yawning because I don't really care about the new iPad and I don't really care about the new iMac. Our guests might feel differently. Uh, we have with us Jenny Feldman, a clinical psychologist, Tom Prusha from Rutgers University, and Paul Oster, the CEO of Better Qualified, the man who knows all about business and consumer credit counseling and beyond. I waited for hours and hours and hours to get this. This is the 6 Plus, the gigantic phone that's as big as my head. I was excited about this. Jane, you don't care about the the iPad Air 2, do you? Well, true confession, I am not an Apple addict. Okay. Um, Droid fan myself, but mm -hmm. the people who are the addicts of the Apple world okay. um, are thrilled about these things, and that's what's driving the market right now. Okay. What's your thought on the new uh, uh, Apple offers? I, I think that Apple's home run is the iPhone and iPhone family, and that's where really, th that this is an incremental, mm -hmm. it fills out the product line, and the Apple Pay, as your segment had, that's the home run for Apple. That's gonna drive a lot of revenue for Apple. And my phone's so big, I don't need a tablet. This is my tablet. So, yeah. what's your thought about that, Paul? It, it goes to, you know, it goes back to the age-old question. What do I want? and what do I need? Right. Do consumers need these new products? They don't. And they're going to wind up spending money that they don't have. They're going to put it on a credit card. Mm -hmm. They're not going to pay it off. They're going to pay. Uh, if the product costs $400 and you put it on a credit card and you don't pay off the balance, it might wind up costing you $800. Uh, so stick with $800 need, <coughs> stick with, with what no you credit need. card. You don't need. Technology's great, but unless you're in the field, Unless you need that technology to drive your business, stick with what you have. Like you said, do you need another inch or two inches? Right. You, you don't need it. You right. don't need any. I got to be the coolest kid in school. I need the coolest phone. Let's turn to Janie for just a second and let's go to Apple Pay. Are you going to use it? Well, in, in terms of my office, I'm definitely going to look into it because making it easier is, is going to be exciting. It's and too hard to swipe the card? <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll take a payment however it comes. You but you know what? It's, it's interesting to your point, Tom, in terms of what's going to happen to things like personal debt because it's one thing when you have a credit card and you have to sign, but if you're just sitting there mm -hmm. and just pointing your device in, in different places, what's going to happen to uh, awareness of what you're spending? Mm -hmm. You're going to be more disconnected. Tom, let me turn to you quickly. What are your thoughts on Apple Pay? Is it going to be a, uh, a big money maker for Apple? I think it's going to be a huge money maker for Apple. But what's ironic is uh, when you travel around the world, you realize the United States is actually just catching up. Uh, electronic forms of payments are common in Asia and common in Europe. And it's a little ironic that this big breakthrough that maybe Apple will be able to lead their, the, on the United States, we're just catching up. Japan's been doing pay by phone for a decade. Don't our governments uh, control us more if they know every penny we're making, every penny we're spending because it's all electronic? Aren't we better off in some cases having a cash economy? Uh, well, I mean, if you're paranoid that uh, you want to, don't want the government tracking you, then you don't want a smartphone. So the, the pay part <laughs> is just one tiny aspect of overall data collection about you. But well, it's it, another big piece. But, could, but you're right. Um, I, maybe I'm one of those paranoid people. Let's turn to Paul for just a second. You have a lot of thoughts uh, yeah, about Apple I, Pay. I want to jump out of my seat because the debt aspect is one thing. Mm -hmm. The tracking is another thing. The data security is a whole different world. So Apple Pay is, is 
uh, driven by NFC, which is near field communication. The hackers already have the devices to breach this security. But people don't really care. I don't care if somebody takes my credit card because I know I'm not responsible for the debt. Unless you've become a victim of identity theft and you speak to the people that I speak to on a daily basis and they're in tears, their lives have been ruined, they've had account takeovers, they've lost things because their accounts were frozen. You're absolutely right. Most of the time, you're not responsible right. monetarily. Right. But it, the it, damage it, it, that's done is devastating and, to and the individual. And it's a pain, you're out to dinner and your credit card is a victim of a, because some waitress swiped it twice. And now all of a sudden they can't use it. I have to explain that somebody but else Apple is going to have to buy I, my Apple Pay, I'm dinner. not a fan of. Let's turn to Hunter Biden. Joe Biden's son is apparently involved on some level with cocaine and kicked out of the uh, armed services. What are your thoughts? You know, any family can have these difficulties. And he got caught. Uh, hopefully someone in such a prominent place, uh, that education, that upbringing would, would have better discretion. Uh, anticipating drug testing can happen, but, but the behavior says to me that there's a, a problem that we have not just in education, but in substances. Tom, what are your thoughts? I think it's, it's a terrible embarrassment for the Biden family. Uh, and that's probably the main really takeaway is that uh, when you're in politics, in public life, your entire family is in public life. And uh, it, it's just an unfortunate incident. And it's a very embarrassing. And it's an economic indicator. He's making too much money, of course. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Paul, what are your thoughts? Well, first, I, I would like to say that people could learn a lot by his reaction. And he actually stepped up to the plate mm -hmm. and said, I did it. I apologize. I made a bad mistake. And you can go back to what happened before that. Why did he start using cocaine? I mean, we could speak for days on that. Sure. So the reasons that he got into involved in that in the first place are one thing. It could happen to anybody. It doesn't matter how much money you have, how poor you are, what walk of life you come from. But what he did in terms of responsibility and standing up and said, he, he didn't try and deny it. He didn't try and make excuses about it. He said, I will forever be remiss about doing it. And I apologize to my friends, my family, the, the United States Navy, but I did it. Okay, we've got some interesting video to show you. We will wipe out of the Biden video and go into the Great Pumpkin video, which apparently is also a picture of the moon taken by NASA. Now, folks who have seen this, I have not until right now say it looks an awful like, like a jack-o'-lantern, although I would think that would have to really be a jack-o'-lantern in yeah. comparison. Have you guys seen this video yet at all, yes. or images of it? Yeah. Janie, what are your thoughts? Although it is a side-by-side -side comparison. There Thank goodness. Go. If it actually had the coolest <laughs> smile, I was going to run <laughs> off the set. Okay, go ahead. Think how arrogant we are as a species, a humanity, that we look at something as magnificent as the, the sun and we say, that looks like us. <laughs> it, it's magnificent. What are your thoughts, Tom? I think it's a, yet another reminder of the incredible world that we live in and that we can be amazed. We often overlook the day to day. The fall leaves magnificent. Pay attention. This is another reminder of the beauty around us. Sounds good. Paul, your thoughts? Absolutely. And maybe, you know, uh, wake up and realize that there are some higher powers uh, that are surrounding us. And pulling those <laughs> strings besides the people who are watching our bank accounts on our smartphones. <laughs> Let's talk a little bit about the sharing economy. I think this is going to be a huge issue for 2014 and beyond. Uber, people share their cars. Um, Airbnb, people share their homes. In New York City, you know, people are making millions by renting out apartments. Mm -hmm. One person rented out 237 apartments and made $6.8 million on Airbnb. What are your thoughts about the sharing economy? Sounds like it might be a great way to go for people. I would defer to my colleagues here who are more in the economy than I think it is this new evolving trend in the market and I think what we're seeing is this tension between uh, an area that needs some regulation, right, you're having people stay, pretend, I'm not, you know, there's a problem when liability happens in these situations, the governments are going to want some regulation versus these new companies arguing that they're somehow different than, than the traditional cab companies. We need to find a middle ground. I'm here. going to switch topics quickly. I know you didn't get to talk about that, Paul, so I'm going to have you talk about this first. We have some footage to show you out of the Caribbean, Hurricane Gonzalo, that has pounded many areas, including Bermuda, leaving a lot of people in the dark. As far 
far as I know, at last check, there was not a death toll, fortunately. What are your thoughts about the upcoming hurricane season and some of the images that we're seeing here? Well, just, you know, fortunately, we have the technology to track these things. You know, there was a time where we had to wait until there was landfall to realize something really ominous was going to happen. So pay attention, listen to the, the warnings, and be on the air on the side of caution. Because if you wait too long and then you get caught in a situation, you know, it could be devastating. Janie, as a clinical psychologist, any advice as we approach hurricane season for those who are brave enough to travel to Point South this time of year? Just be careful. Watch the forecast. Take heed of the warnings. If the governor says get out of town, probably a good idea. Okay, and Tom, I'm going to give you the final word on this. I think that this issue with the hurricane, particularly right now, just last week, 10 days ago, we had two powerful storms in the Pacific. You know, for me, the takeaway is I don't need to be in Bermuda to experience the impact of these hurricanes. New Jersey had a, a giant impact, Sandy, uh, two years ago. Uh, this is a, another reflection of probably changing in, uh, climate change. And, and we're going to have to talk about that. that another week here on Fresh Outlook. I'm Logan Crawford, and I want to thank our guests for joining us today. Janie Feldman, who is a clinical psychologist extraordinaire who practices in Warren, New Jersey. We are also joined by Tom Prusha from Rutgers University, who is an expert on economics and trade policy, and Paul Oster, the CEO of Better Quality qualified and expert on business and consumer credit. And I'm Logan Crawford, an expert on not much, but I am your host here on Fresh Outlook. And I want to thank you for joining us on this talk show that helps you keep in touch and keep informed and keep your outlook fresh. See you next week.